Welcome to the I Am Sherry Goodall podcast. I am so excited to be in the second season of this podcast. And I thank all of my listeners who have stuck with me from the first season. But this season is really exciting and I have some great guests. And today my guest is my good, good girlfriend, Audrey Legrand, who is like my big sister. (laughs) My big sis. And well, thank you. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. Yes. And um, <laughs> and so I want to take a second, RG. Why don't you tell people a little bit about um, what gets you out of the bed in the mornings? Like, what are you excited about these days? Well, I guess what excites me these days is that for perhaps maybe the last 15 to 20 plus years, I have really been my own person, my own small business. I've been able to be flexible enough to enjoy doing what I love, which is training and development, um, as well as writing my first book. So the fact that I'm really in control of my time and my destiny is probably what gets, oh, it's not probably, I know it's what gets me up in the morning. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's exciting. I I think having time freedom is one of the biggest, most important things that most people go into entrepreneurship for. And even though we do have time freedom, I think there's also this misconception that all you do is just like lounge around and just work when you feel like it. Oh, no, I'm probably working harder now than I did when I had a traditional job. And that's because you're responsible for everything. The beauty of that is you, it's like um, birthing a child. You get to see it from beginning to end. You get to control it. Um, and not in a bad way when we use that word. But you have your hands in every aspect of what you're doing. And so you really... Get, you immerse yourself and you get to know every aspect of your business. So give us a little bit of the backstory about um, your origin. Like what, what is your business? How did you get into it? Okay. So my business is a uh, human resources consulting firm. We work with small to medium sized businesses to make sure that they get the right people in the right job for the right amount of money each time. Um, I also work with individuals and help them as a career coach to find what direction they want to head in and put together a career map that will eventually get them there over time. Um, So that's, you know, in a nutshell, that's what my business does. Yeah. So how did you get into doing this on your own? Like what what brought you to self-employment? Sure. Well, let's take a step back from what I just explained. My background is human resources, um, about 25 years plus in HR. And the one thing that I noticed as I moved through my HR career is people would always consistently come in and complain about their jobs, but they never seemed to do anything about it. Um, It's almost as if they were transfixed and didn't know what the next step was, or they thought this job they had was the only job they could go after. And so I watched people just year after year become more miserable and more miserable and more miserable. And I kept thinking to myself, why don't they do something? Why don't they change something in their lives? And then it dawned on me, they really don't know what the next step is. They don't have control over their career. And so that kind of set me on the mission of how do I show people in a very easy step-by-step method, how you take control of your career and how you propel yourself forward. And so that actually led me, uh, after a lot of soul searching and a lot of research as well, to actually write my first book, um, which is entitled How to Get Out of Job Jail, Eight Ways to Have the Career You've Always Wanted, which of course there is a copy of right there for you. Um, But that allowed me to say to an individual, if you take these steps, at least you've got movement towards the direction you want to go. Um, it amazes me, Sherry. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, 85% of all working adults actually hate their job. And hate is a strong emotion. It's a strong word. Um, they didn't I don't say know, it's just it's more like, shocking the 85% or the word hate. <laughs> I mean, wow, 85%. Right. 85% hate. I'll repeat it, 85% hate. That means it's not a dislike, it's not a disgruntlement. They hate it. 
which begs the question of why are you getting up every morning going to that particular job? Your life is literally exasperating away in front of you because you can't make a decision to go do something else. And so what, what I believe what I've done is taken literally the word career and every letter stands for something that you've got to master and do in order to take you to the next level. Um, and so I tell people if they simply start, it's amazing when you ask the simple question, if you were not here today at this job, what would you be doing? Yeah. No answer. No answer. Yes. You know, or, or let's rephrase that. If you could only do one or maybe two things from now to the end of time, what would you be doing? Mm -hmm. And they have no answer because they have no direction for their career. Everybody says the same thing. I have to work because I need money. True. Unless you are independently wealthy, I get it. But all jobs pay money of some sort. Otherwise, it's volunteer work. Okay. So right. you can get this money other places. What makes you come to this job? What makes you continue coming to this job? And how do we get you to move from A to B? Now, they'll give me all sorts of excuses. Well, you know, I've got kids in college or I've got uh, kids that need this and I've got a house, I've got car notes, I've got bills. We all fundamentally have the same things. It's just about taking control of your career. And so we start with the basics. Answer the question, what do you want to do with the rest of your career? Where do you see yourself going? Where's your passion? Where's your interest? What motivates you? What gets you up out of bed? Which was your opening question to me. Where, what are you interested in doing? What do you see yourself doing? And once we get a handle on that, then we can actually put together a career map that leads them in that direction. And I've had to really oversimplify it for some people because that seems overwhelming, you know, putting the career map together and moving from the comfort of the job that I have perhaps to the unknown. Once we get the map together, I tell people, if you just do one thing per day towards your goal, you will get there. But if you don't do anything at all, you're, no, you're going nowhere. We will have this same conversation next year. And I'll be like, and what's changed? So with that being said, how do you help people uh, through the work that you do in your book? What, what, what are you doing that helps people to get over that, get that 85% out of that hate job? Right, right. Lower that 85% curve. Well, we start yes. by identifying what are you passionate about? Where are your interests? What do you see yourself doing? And once we've identified that, then we can talk about the necessary steps to get you there. And that's what I keep emphasizing. They are steps. They're not leaps. They're not bounds. They are simply baby steps if need be. Um, and lots of times when people discover what they are passionate about, it means they've got to go back to school, perhaps, or they have to be recertified to do something. One of those steps is simply picking up the phone or emailing the college that you want to go to to find out when does the next term start? Where do I need to start to recertify myself for the direction that I want to go in? So we're just talking about creating the map and working the steps and then checking in. My role as your coach is to check in with you to make sure you are doing the steps because you have to be held down. So what are some of the tools and, and, and um, I guess practices that you use mm -hmm. to help people through this? Well, first of all, it amazes me the number of working adults who do not have what I call a walking resume. You, they, you need a walking resume. If the company tells you to go out the door today or you choose to leave tomorrow, you're, you, you need a, a resume that can walk with you out the door. After you've made the decision to leave or to be asked to leave, it's not the time for you to, to be emotionally invested in putting your resume together. So those kinds of things need to be done while you are working. So we have to start at the basics. Is your resume together? And I have to be honest with you, for what I see, for most resumes, they are not, they're nowhere near close to being put together, ready for someone to go and actually find um, employment. So we start with the basics. Is the resume together? 
and how long of a process is that going to take? And I tell people in the meantime, think about your communication skills because it's very critical, not only uh, in this particular market, that you speak well, that you must write well because so much of what we do is now on a digital platform, which means your words are going to be out there forever. So we have to look at your communication. We have to look at that resume. Um, in terms of looking at the resume, we have gotta look at what skills and abilities you have. What I see a lot that's happening on resumes these days, people are just dumping your job description onto their resume. That's not what you put on a resume. What you put on a resume of what you have accomplished or what you actually did for the company. And there's a difference from what your, your job description talks about what you're responsible for. The resume talks about what you actually accomplished. That's we a have great to- point. Yes. And I, I'm glad you said that. I know um, the other day you were actually mentoring a, a young man who's very special in my life and um, and he's looking for a job uh, and he, he's been a mentee of mine and he said, oh, Miss Sherry, can you help me with my cover letter? And I was like, mm-hmm. no, I've got just the person for you. And that was something you told him that actually, you know, as much as I know it, I didn't know it. So I was glad you yeah. said that because you're right. A lot of people do put the job description, myself included. I've done that a million and one times, but oh, you're right. Understand. Accomplishments and the style of the resume used to yeah. be you listed the description and then you had an accomplishment section and you had an objective section. But now you're saying that the style is different. Oh, Can you style, talk about that a little more? Sure. The style is completely different. And style is very personal. Uh, it, it, it's pretty much like we are as individuals. The style and the format of the resume is completely up to you. It's what catches your eye. The content uh, and you know this from social media, content is is queen. So we, we've got to make sure we have the right content on the resume. And so what's important now, and I tell people to do a little research, you you know, depending upon your skills and your background, and if you've only had one steady eddy job for a while, you might just want to do a chronological resume because it suits your purposes. For most of us who have done a variety of things and we've moved several times within our career and even moved within the industries, you're going to probably look at a functional resume because it's going to speak more to what you have done, what you have accomplished. Um, And then there's a hybrid between the two uh, appropriately named combination where you use a little bit of both. So you've got to figure out the best way to display your talents. Um, I think of that eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that encompasses our resume. That is very expensive real estate. We need to use Mm. that space very wisely, what we put on. That's excellent. So let's talk a little bit about about your career trajectory. What type mm-hmm. of setbacks or or regrets have you had that that you've been able to um, kind of turn around? And, and what would you say to someone else facing those kind of th- situations? You know, as crazy as this is going to sound, I think right now. One of the, the the fact that we are uh, you know in a situation where we are basically quarantined is probably really good for most of us. Now, I know that sounds crazy because people are like, no, 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 I got to pay my bills. I need to go back to work. But at some point in time, and that is our number one priority, we have to pivot. We've got to start thinking about our future. So I think this downtime can be used very wisely if people will just stretch a little bit. But in terms of my own personal setbacks, let me, let me answer that. The reason I said it up that way I think one of the best things that can happen to a person is to either be laid off or fired. And if it's early enough in your career, you have time to build from it, learn from it and build forward. And I've been in both situations. I have been asked to go out the door, so I know exactly what that feels like. Uh, I have been laid off and I've also chosen not to come back. Um, And making those decisions are not done lightly. They take a lot of thought. Um, It's very scary on the other side, but I can say in each one of those situations, it was the best thing that happened to me because it made me get up off of my push and do some things for myself. <laughs> okay? yes. I so it, we, because without that kick, I might not have done some of the things that I did. So I understand mm-hmm. when people say, well, I was laid off and I wasn't expecting this. Okay, but count it as a blessing. Figure out what you learned from it and let's move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So what's next for you, Audrey? Oh, you know, I'm probably like most people 
doing some self-evaluation these days, trying to decide what really is next for me. Um, I am very blessed and very fortunate to be at a point where I have the luxury of time and some people don't have that to try to figure out what's next. Um, as you and I know, we, we men as trainers, so I absolutely thoroughly in, uh, love training and staff development. I also enjoy coaching individuals as well. What I haven't talked about is the work that I do with small to medium-sized companies who perhaps don't have an HR department and helping them actually put in place everything that they need. Um, you know, such as their policies, their procedures. Um, I try to leave them at a point where the jo full job description for an HR person is already there. All we have to do is go find the right person for them. And it's often a question of my clients, well, why don't you stay? Because I'm not looking for a traditional nine to five. So we got to put somebody in that spot when this is their opportunity to shine. Yes. Mm -hmm. So where can people find more information about you and get a hold of your book and contact you? Well, thanks. They can go directly to my website, which is The Job Jail Lady. Um, and all of that is spelled out, the, including the buff, they, they're going to need that as well, the job jail lady, or you know what, I made it easy, if they forget the the, and just remember job jail lady, they can get there as well, dot com, um, so they can go directly to my site, they can see articles that I've written, they can get a copy of the book as well, um, and then of course I'm on all the social media platforms, um, I, you know, my son put me on Instagram, okay, I'm still working with that, <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. Um, and of, of course, course. It's my full name, Audrey Legrand. Um, they can find me on Twitter, with the job Bell lady. Um, I'm on Facebook. So whether they're using my name or my pseudonym, which is the job Bell lady, they should be able to find me. Awesome. So this is uh, coming to the end of the show. And this is okay. a segment I like to call rapid fire. Okay. So you have to answer with the first, first thing that comes to mind. Oh, Lord, let me loosen my scarf for this. Okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> So, girls trip or waiting to exhale? Girls trip. All right. If you were a super a superhero, what would your secret power be? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, ooh, I, ooh, the first thing that comes to mind, my secret power would be lighting fires under people to get them to move. Ah, okay. <laughs> and, and not get caught. <laughs> <laughs> and not get a call. That's why it's a superpower. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. And last question. What's what are you listening to uh music wise these days? Who's on your playlist? Ooh, um, I'm an old school girl. So give me anything from Motown. I think I just put my age out there. Um That's okay. But but you know, the other night I was watching. My, listen, my daughter is 21 and she's she loves Motown, she loves Anthony Hamilton, she loves a lot of the old school stuff too. Exactly. Okay, so give me anything from Motown. The other night I was watching Garth Brooks, so there's diversity on my playlist. Um, you know, I've got to throw in, I got to throw in some good gospel because it just speaks to the soul. Um, so, uh, it, you know, I'm open. I'm diverse. Um, I I also like classical as well. I'm probably the only person on the planet that has a CD by three black um, opera singers. Okay, so I, I, you know, just give me something in the background. I'm good to go. Good. Well, thank you so much for being my guest, and I'm very excited to have you and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Listen, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really do appreciate it, and the best to you in your new season. <laughs>